Hey. You are going the wrong way down the street. <laughs> Hello. Hey. Welcome to the first part of our Belgium vlog. Yay, Yay. part one. So we spent um, two and a half weeks in Belgium and uh, we arrived just in the aftermath of Storm Kira, Storm Dennis and Storm Eileen and all those mm -hmm. bad boys. Yeah, girls. they really wanted to make Belgium a good experience for us. Yeah. <laughs> and it was. It was great. But it was a slightly different experience, actually, than uh, our normal. Not only because we're now living in a motorhome, which mm -hmm. we're pretty much used to now, Race. Um, anyone that's seen our one month video. Um, but we had um, we had a film crew with us oh. for a couple of days. Erwin Heimer sent a film crew out um, to just kind of um, document a bit of the stuff that we do. And um, how we're getting on in the van. Yeah, and that was, they were great. But we had a day out with them in Bruges, and uh, it was great. Yeah. Yeah, Bruges is really, really nice. And yeah. We've never been before, have we? We've never been, and we've wanted to go ever since we, well, probably before, but since we saw the film in Bruges, we yeah. were like, that makes you want to go if there's yeah. a film about it. I want to be a hitman, and <laughs> I want to be also in Bruges. Um, there you go. Um, so, yeah, so we got to go there, and Bruges, uh, to be honest with you, is not somewhere I ever thought that we would go while we had young children. Living in a motorhome means that we can do that more freely because if they're not in the right mood, we don't have to go. Yeah. We haven't, you, know. you haven't lost anything. <laughs> yeah. And on that note, what we did was to balance it out um, was we went to a museum, but we went to a chocolate museum. Yeah. So we weren't getting maybe as much culture as we could get, or well, we did see the, mm -hmm. you could see the architecture, but rather than try and take the kids into something where they're just going to explode. Um, they did explode because there was all you can eat chocolate. Oh my God, it was so much. <laughs> so you walk in and on the first floor, we went to the Choco story. You get story. some chocolate when you go in. Yeah, bar of chocolate when you go in. And then on the first floor, there's a little t tappy turny tap and you get some dark chocolate. Now myself and our videographer Luke, well, all of us really. We but all mostly went, you two to start with. Yeah, we went to town on this because we're like, we're English. We're going to take all the free chocolate we can get. <laughs> but we didn't know there was going to be free chocolate on every floor. And you started to feel sick already, didn't oh, you? I was so already, it's dark, nice yeah. rich chocolate, is it? Yeah, and the second floor was milk and white. Rufus was obviously trying to keep up with them. Yeah, and the last floor was dark again but this time it was taste testing dark chocolate we came out of there and this is how this is how much chocolate we ate rufus was looking forward to a waffle for days he was the, so excited wasn't he yeah, yeah and the film crew were going to buy him a waffle and he didn't want it <laughs> he was like afterwards i said should we get one to share and he's like no i think it's a bit too much too much if kids are saying about too much chocolate you know yeah it was quite a nice museum though, it wasn't super interactive or anything, mm. but it was fun, it was a nice way to spend a few hours. Um, and it was it was it was beautiful the whole place, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, like, it was, it was nice. it, I would have liked to visit it in the dark because the the lights are meant to be beautiful, but we have, you know, bedtime. They were gonna go up the Belfry Tower as well and um, check out the view and just see what it was like up there. Uh, but there was about a 25 minute wait. Yeah, which um, isn't that long, but we were at the end of the day then. Yeah, and I think it's 300 steps, which is not that bad. No. So instead of going up the tower, um, we went to get some fries instead because we were getting hungry. And um, we were looking around for some French fries, Belgian fries, um, and we uh, we just stopped somewhere in the in the main square, didn't we? In the yeah. end, I've got to just explain that actually because um, there's this thing about French fries being famous, but a lot of people we've got a few friends that are Belgium, and they say that uh, basically that idea was stolen and Belgian fries are better because they double cook their chips. Double fry. Double fry, and they are good. They are good. Yeah, everywhere we've had fries in Belgium has been good. However, if you buy them in Bruges... They bloody ought to be good. We bought two plates of chips because we were advised they were big plates of chips so you don't need any more than two. And yeah. we were like, okay, we'll take your advice. But normally we know we eat a lot anyway. And there were more adults with us. Because um, we were feeding the crew as well. Yeah. Two guys from the crew. And we bought a biggish bottle of water 20... 25 euros. 25 euros. 20, just think about Two plates of chips. 25 euros, that's, that's like over 20 quid. And some water. For two plates of chips and some water. And then right at the end, 
Rufus spilt the water on the last few chips, so we, we were like, no! <laughs> We're like, we're eating them. <laughs> and just before we went as well, there was still some water left in the glasses. And we were like, Rufus, finish your water. Yeah, finish that, mate. It's quite expensive. It's gold water. If you're going on the main square, um, be, be prepared. prepared to spend big. Obviously, city prices, but that was quite a shocking mm. one because chips is the cheapest meal in the yeah. universe, isn't it? It's Not potato. Bruges. Anyway, the whole time was the the Bruges is gorgeous, and there's mm. the the Bruges the the Bruges the the Bruges the the Bruges the, the Bruges is gorgeous, and there's mm. so many little other things that I would have liked to have done that I would like to go back. I think. Yeah, okay. we didn't see enough of it. No. Um, but when we first arrived, um, we got to the river, which was. Be- oh, it was lovely, wasn't yeah. it? That river view was gorgeous. And then you walk down the street to get to the main square, and I've never seen so many chocolate shops in my yeah, life. Yeah, we know. Ever. Yeah, it's just they were really nice. They were all really intricate mm. inside, but all really different yeah. somehow. They weren't the same design. There were too many. They were continuous on both there sides. There was, yeah. Like, um, we did find one. There was one <clears> that we liked the look of that we had to go into because it just looked perfect and traditional it was lovely yeah. and um yeah there were that, that that shop had the most people in there it was so <laughs> probably good probably because it looked the nicest but there were just too many i didn't I yeah i do think they overdid it with that um but then i know that's what it's famous for yeah. but we felt we felt it was a bit overkill yeah. Uh, but yeah so bruges bruges was a winner yeah place we stayed when we were in bruges yes um we, we had a campsite called Camping Malming and it was awesome. You found it, didn't you? No, you did. Did yeah, I find you it? Did. We it's don't, like I did that yeah. purpose. Did you find it? Yeah. Oh, it was me. Yeah, I get the credit. <laughs> um, no, we um, we don't actually have campsites that often. Um, so it was our first one in Belgium, wasn't it? Yes. Yep. For the two and a half weeks we were there. Mm-hmm. And um, we booked it specifically because we knew we'd have the guys with us from Owenheimer anyway. And we needed to do some washing, so we needed someone with a washing machine. And this one was good. It was just a small site, mm. really, but their facilities were really nice. Really good. They had Really some... close to the centre, and there is a bus stop down the road. Yes. And you walked to the shop as well. Which yeah, they had a lot of perks there that were a, a bit unique. They had a piano. Yeah. How many campsites? Let's have a piano. The TV kind of room and loads of DVDs to borrow. Biggest bins ever that Riley yeah. loved. Oh, the bins. Watching the bins being emptied was nice, and that's not a euphemism. <laughs> um, the showers were good, um, and yeah, you could walk to um, bus stop to the shop to the bus yeah. stop, and the shops were just not one oh. shop. It was a whole um, kind of oh, it was a whole <laughs> whole array, like a whole a retail park. That's it. Oh, um, <laughs> I was going to say, what about that adventure park thing? Oh my god, yeah, I see, see why she did it. I see why she did it. I take it all back. It wasn't really a park though, was it? Like in the woods, there was this, um, which Luke and Frank actually spotted on the way in. Yeah. And it was like a park. They have like a really nice woodlands out the back with yeah. a stream and a little lake and the ducks there were lovely and mm. everything. It's like a self made, um, like. Assault uh, course. Adult assault course thing. Um, there was just like mm. cargo nets and rubber tyres. It looked really industrial and yeah. really, but then also, yeah, maybe not. It looked organic. It was like very organic. Planet, planet of the Apes. Yes. We were, uh, Caesar built it. Yeah. <laughs> no! We were like, just be really careful here, guys. <laughs> yeah, it was really good. So, Camping Melming, like, yeah, we cool. really recommend that place. It, we, we really enjoyed it there and it was, it was brilliant. So another place we want to talk to you about is Ghent. Ghent. So it's spelled G-H-E-N-T. Unless you're in Belgium and it's just spelled G-E-N-T. Is it? Yeah. Oh, I forgot that. Yeah. Why do we put H in it? Why do we complicate these things? Because it's Gent otherwise, isn't it? Yeah. Maybe they say Gent. It's like if you're gent Belgian, music. do you say Gent or Ghent? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> It's really nice. I'd, I'd never heard of it. You knew about it, didn't yeah. you? You knew all about it. You, mm-hmm. you are a real day I do know these things. Um, yeah. But it was really lovely. We, um, once again, we uh, we only planned to be here for a day, mm. and then we ended up spending another day. Um, we parking was almost tricky, and then we managed to find this thing called Kiss and Ride, and we thought, oh, that's so that must, cute. That's so that they cute. Call they it call that. it that. Yeah. These, these I Belgians. Think, I wonder why they call it that. Yeah. We said quite a few times, didn't we? I was looking at Belgian people down the street, going, oh, ah. you <laughs> Kiss and Ride. <laughs> um, so we quite parked, weird. Now you think about it. Yeah, we parked there on a Sunday. It was our first day there, and. Um, 
because nothing was really open. Mm -hmm. Nothing's open in Europe on nah, Sunday. No one does anything Which is on good. Sunday. We walked to to a park and it was. Do you know the name of the park? Mm, no, but here it is. Yeah, here's the park, <laughs> and it was lovely. It had like nice open green spaces a bit and of history going on. Yeah, we we had a lot of fun, and Rufus was really using his imagination, and we were enjoying some oh, of the yeah. statues. The one with the two lions, like roaring each other. Roaring. <laughs> That's the technical words. I've not seen such a aggressive yeah, uh, it was like display of Make this picture come to life in ten years! Run! I don't want to be here in ten years when that happens. I made it with my stick many years ago. Okay, let's have a look now. Many years ago this family circle was made by an ancient boy named Rufus who was six years old at the time, but it was still many years ago. <laughs> Everyone inside this circle is special in some way, and in no way deranged. <laughs> Make these people family! Ah, it shouldn't, it sh should have supposed to have been light up, but it's so windy. Oh, I didn't light up because the wind put it straight out. Not matter how long you play at a park with a kid. It's very rare that they're ready to go when you want to go. No. Come on, please, please. <laughs> it's Sunday and it's five o'clock and I'm We've starving. We've been here for so many hours. Yeah. Uh, as we were leaving the park, we realised that there was like a warning sign to not go in there. Uh, do you remember? Yeah, because the wind was, yeah, it was terrible. Terrible. Um, yeah. And then there was a sign yeah on the way out. Yeah, wasn't it's there? dangerous. Danger of falling branches. Do not enter. Or enter we your own um, risk. translated it well, actually. So we saw that on the way out, yeah. so that was good. Lots of other people were in there, it's fine, but yeah, yeah we uh, illegally entered, it wasn't illegally, at your own risk. So yeah, that was our first day, so we it enjoyed wicked, it. Yeah. So we thought, kiss and ride, that was easy, we'll go back and do that again. Mm -hmm. So we went back, and this time we got the, tram. got the tram, and this is where we saw, first saw, tons of bikes. Mm -hmm. We saw so many bicycles, and I know that Europe is famous for that, but I've never seen this many. Um, there were so many, wasn't there? There were so many, yeah. Like, I can't even fathom how many there were. Like, how do they, how do they know whose bike is whose? Yeah, like, they all looked the same. Like, they were all like, they weren't like brand new posh bikes. No, they were, they? Just they were like, like classic, sturdy workhorses. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and they were all like locked up and like just on top of each other. And uh, I know it's like it's quite normal for big cities in Europe but we're still not really that I'm used to it. Used Everyone to it. was on bikes. Yeah. I saw more bikes park though than people on bikes. Yeah. But maybe it's because it was I know it would have been it was Monday that day. Yeah, I don't know. So we got the tram yeah. into the centre and immediately when we got off the tram we took care of business and we got pan of chocolate. Yeah, yeah. But what is good is they did they do pan of chocolate and they don't just put chocolate on the inside of the pan. They put it on top of the pan. <laughs> So these guys know what they're doing. We're they're like, like, I'm gonna monge that. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna monge that like it's never been monged. And I was like, monge this, and I was like, okay. hell yeah. Oh yeah, no. Rufus was like, his day was made. Oh my god, yeah. I've never seen him so happy. Yeah, ex extra chocolate on your pan. Mm. <laughs> um, oh, but going back to the kiss and ride, let's talk about that. Yeah, the kiss and ride was really cute, and we uh, later. Later in our time in Belgium, we <laughs> mentioned it to our friends and we said, why is it called Kiss and Ride? And then we realised we did it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> like we do. Yeah. It's not really to park and ride, it's where you drop people off so that they can get on the tram or whatever. Um, so it's like you kiss them and they go. So like it's still cute. Leaves. It is still cute, yeah. We weren't the only ones parked there, so it was okay. But we parked there for pretty much two full days yeah. and we're lucky we didn't get a ticket. <laughs> As soon as we got off the tram, oh my god, it was amazing! Yeah, we were just presented with cathedrals, something amazing. Cathedrals. Yeah, cathedrals. You just came around this corner, right at the, the was it the last tram stop, maybe? Mm. And uh, it was just, you just didn't know which way to go because mm. the just the scenery was just amazing from both sides. Just everywhere there was incredible, and we went into one of the cathedrals, and it was so gothic. Do you remember? Yeah. Oh, it was really dark. Yeah, it was um, really cool. And it was really good because it had all the portraits of the old... Um, oh, that bit was really, really good, good, yeah. You could see, like, it went back for hundreds of years, didn't it? Yeah, they were quite depressing. The pastors? The old pastors? Is that what they're called? I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so the, the main square was beautiful, loads to see, just beautiful architecture to be in awe of. 
And also, we had some apples that tasted like grass. Oh god, yeah, they really did. Like Rufus, we were giving him his apple before he had some junk. In fact, he's had his pan of chocolate, so he'd had some junk. But yeah, he was eating his apple and he's saying it tastes like grass. And we're like, oh, just shut up, what are you talking about? Just Come shut up. <laughs> You're trying to get away with shut eating up. your fruit. You know, you know what you're like? You know what the kids are like? It tastes a bit like grass. Because I've, I've actually tried eating grass before. Okay. I tried it and he was right. It was so grassy. It was so grassy. Like, yeah. So, yeah. Watch out. So, yeah. Watch out what apples you buy. They might taste like grass. Um, but we were having a lovely time and we were kind of about to go and get some food. Um, try some local Ghent delicacies. Ghent noses is one that we wanted to try. Mm. And then, because Riley does this. Strutting like a hero. Weapons. This happened. So Riley's just taken to recently to walk in with her hands in her pockets, which, which is dead cute, isn't it? Cute, but we just keep trying to stop her from doing it. But she she refuses. Like she's very strong-willed. She refuses to let us hold on to her while she's mm. walking. So Riley fell over, and there was she... so much blood. I think her tooth went through her lip. Yeah. Um. And we panicked for a moment we thought right what we're we going to do because we are nowhere near our vehicle yeah we um, have to get the tram to the hospital do we get the tram to the hospital do we get a taxi to the yeah. hospital do we go do we and go get to the, the hospital <laughs> can you take the motor home to the hospital so all these questions run through our head and then we see that we're literally equidistant from two different pharmacies and i'm like right which one do we go to so we we hustled and just picked one of them and um the lady in there was just amazing. She was amazing. Um, she said that it just happened to her son, who was a few years older. Like um, she said, the hospital wouldn't stitch it. And she gave us some two different ointments, and she was dead right. Yeah, she was perfect. Within, wasn't within she? Within a she week. checked her teeth and everything. Brilliant. She did. Re she was great because when you panic a little bit, I mean, by the time we got there, like um, it stopped bleeding so much, which was incredible. And we 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 always love the odd. Blood clotting. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so cool. Um, thank you, biology. Thank you. <laughs> it was really sad. It made us really sad. Yeah. So we didn't really get to fully explore everything that Ken had to offer because we felt like we got there, looked at the architecture, went into the church, yeah. and then kind of had to go. Yeah. But again, we highly recommend yes, that, especially absolutely. if you just like, if you like beautiful scenery. And if you want to cycle around, I suppose, there's yeah. plenty of places to park. Yeah, yeah, but don't drive into Ghent at rush hour in the morning. Yeah, and... That's my advice. Find a park and ride, not a kiss and ride. Yeah. Uh, one other thing I want to say about Ghent is it was where our very first free motorhome air was. Oh, yeah. We don't really have any in the UK. And uh, yeah, everything was free. We couldn't believe it, could we? Mm. I think we'd, we... we felt very humbled didn't yeah it? felt very like very lucky um just to explain quickly what an air is for anyone who doesn't know because i wouldn't have known mm -hmm. so an air is kind of like it's not a campsite it's basically dedicated uh, parking dedicated parking stop off for a motorhome so sometimes it could just be a parking space but sometimes it might have power or water or mm -hmm. the things that you need but this had everything yeah. and it was free it was amazing <laughs> uh, we've been we've been to Belgium a few times and we've never been to the capital so we thought we'd go mm -hmm. and um, we were really looking forward to it weren't yeah, we seeing what it was seeing like, what it's like. Uh, so we drove in we are just getting into Brussels um, we've never been before it's the first time for us all yeah. Rufus have you been to Brussels before Rufus has been apparently uh, he in his <laughs> dreams he hasn't uh, we are going to find some parking, which apparently there's some parking right near the centre or right in the centre near the court. Yes. Near the court. Um, whether there'll be any spaces, I don't know. And there was no parking at the courthouse. Because, so many cars there. Yeah, it was full and there was like roadworks and there was like some sort of festival happening. Mm. It was great fun, actually. We actually it was, really enjoyed. We, it was one of our favourite driving days. Yeah, but it was basically we probably drove for about two and a half yeah. hours that day, and we didn't even get out of the car. No, um, <laughs> out of the van. It was just like um, driving around trying to find somewhere, and then it's just so funny when we realised, oh, it's Saturday, yeah, and really you're in the capital city, and you're in a motorhome that you can't even if you're lucky enough to find a space, you can't fit in it. Yeah, um, you idiots. <laughs> And uh, but yeah, it was a really nice day actually, and the city centre does look nice. Yeah. This is nice. It feels a bit American. This yeah. Is what I imagine like New York to be. Oh, okay. Whoop. Okay. 
be interested I'm not comparing it to Milano Skagnet, which I normally am. <laughs> You're comparing it to a place you haven't been. So one city we love in Belgium that we've been to many times is Namur. Um, and we we love it. We first went there quite a few years ago and we've got friends there. On a music trip. Yeah, on a music trip. It's amazing. And it's um, the first place we had something very special. Mm. Um, relations. No, um, it's something called Le Dom Blanche. A dessert. It's a dessert. Oh, it is relations. No, it's not A dessert relations. called Le Dom Blanche. <laughs> oh, yeah, I get what you're saying. No. No. What are you talking about? Scott asked for this dessert in a shop that we went into and I think she misunderstood what he meant. Oh, yeah. That's why I'm saying it's a dessert. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Right, the Dame Blanche translates to mean the white lady and it's basically this dessert which is ice cream with hot chocolate sauce poured over the top and some chantilly cream. But we went into, we couldn't find it so we had to settle for bubble waffles, which you know, they were fun mm -hmm. and horrendously expensive but nice. Yeah. But when I walked into the bubble waffle shop, the lady didn't speak very good English and my French is okay. Um, and I said, "A tu le don blanche." Like I thought it was like, "Have you the dame the don blanche?" And she said, "What did she say?" Yes, I should hope so. I should hope so. <laughs> and then I realised that she was saying, "I think she thought I was saying, do you serve white ladies?" Like as if it was some sort of race card I was playing. Like, Where's that? And I, I don't know. It's just, um, but. So that got us um, meal ordering off to a good start. Yeah. Um, and then I had to kind of try and explain it, but then they didn't do it. Yeah, turns um, out the uh, dessert isn't that well known in waffle houses. Yeah, so we had, we had waffles and they were fun. And then... Not long after, we found the cafe. We found the cafe when we'd <laughs> it eaten. It was too late then. And we were just meeting our friends then, so it's too freaking late. But mm. if you're ever in Belgium, get the Dame Blanche. It's really, really lovely. And you, you, the way you can pour your own hot chocolate sauce. But, um, so what we did after finding our disappointing dessert, I went busking with my friend Tom uh, from Belgium, Tom C. And we had a blast out in the cold. It was doing, freezing. Doing some busking. Um, I went to Pizza Hut. Yeah, these after guys... After a little while, after a little yeah. while. There's only so long you can... Uh, Stay for a bit and you're like, oh, they're doing that song again. No, it's cold. It's brown Eyed Girl, oh. <laughs> hey, Daddy. So it's fun to be with my friend Buskin, doing a little bit of that was nice, yes. doing some music. Um, and then we had a, a night with our friends just um, around Fabian's house. Hey Fabian, thanks for the meal. Mm -hmm. Merci pour le repas. <laughs> um, and then we, that's basically was the end of our time in Belgium. Yes. We, we headed out um, via Bastogne towards Luxembourg. But um, Namur, a few other things about Namur which we didn't see this time but we have seen before is the citadel is beautiful yeah. as well worth seeing and Namur has got some great rivers running through it um, and it's just a nice little city, it's very small. Um, if you go there you can hear my friend Tom Buskin, Tom C. In Belgium one thing that made us, uh, took us by surprise a little bit and when we first got there we went north of Belgium and we were speaking French to people, but they don't really speak French in the north of Belgium. They uh, speak Flemish or Dutch or, well, I think they're very similar, aren't they? Yeah. Um, not the same, but similar. So watch out for that. Belgium is a bit like Switzerland, where it's like multilingual in different yeah. areas and you have to know where you are. And it, we try and use French like Mel said and we mm. got caught out a little we bit. We were so excited to get to try out our French and then we went to somewhere that wasn't French. Yeah. Also, 
overall, Belgium was brilliant for motorhoming. Yes, um, it really was good. such a nice change after being in the UK and motorhoming for a month. And I don't mean in a horrible way, because obviously we love the UK, mm-hmm. we're from there. But it's rubbish for motorhomes. Yeah. Like, you, You're got, not really allowed to stay anywhere. No, you've got great sites in the UK, but there's no airs or anything like that. But in, in Belgium, there were some great places mm-hmm. to stay for cheap or tiny or bits of money. Yeah. And they often were on the side of um, sports centres. So we could go swimming. We went swimming one day and you could use the facilities parks around and stuff parks, they, yeah. they seem to have it set, like really well done and so thanks to belgium yeah. for that um and we we think the things that we would recommend about belgium it's not we wouldn't say that the landscape is the always the most glamorous Exciting, thing it's not like yeah. giant mountains and lakes but there are lovely rivers and lovely cities great architecture oh every city was yeah. just beautiful like every city was gorgeous the, the small towns that we went through mm. were just lovely everywhere yeah and the people are really nice yeah. so we do we will recommend belgium we've got second part of our vlog um if you'd like to watch that is um a history element so if you've got children or if you're interested in that type of thing that vlog's going to be out very soon um Um, But thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Tastes like grass. <laughs> exactly like grass. Do I whip? Tastes like grass.